The Caribbean spiny lobster is the most valuable fishery in Florida and throughout the Caribbean. Every year, commercial fishermen pull almost a million pounds of spiny lobster from the Atlantic Ocean and Caribbean Sea at an economic value of just under a billion dollars. These crustaceans are bottom dwellers that forage for food at night and seek shelter with other lobsters during the day. It's that shelter-seeking habit that allows fishermen to catch these valuable animals. Fishermen in Florida use wooden traps. Lobsters enter the traps while seeking shelter, and fishermen pull the traps into their boats. However, in much of the Caribbean, fishermen use small structures placed on the ocean floor called casitas. During the day, lobsters hide in the casitas to avoid predators and fishermen can dive down to collect them. Casita is a Spanish word, and it means, you know, little house. And so this is the term that people use for these structures that fishermen have, have deployed for attracting lobsters. So it's another type of fishing gear. Here in Florida, it's illegal as fishing gear. Um, it's considered illegal dumping to put things like that, to put anything in a national marine sanctuary. And so it's currently Ill illegal to put casitas out or to use casitas, to fish those casitas. Scientists Don Berenger and Mark Butler are studying the impact of casitas on the ecology of lobsters. Even though these structures are illegal, the Fish and Wildlife Commission estimates there could be as many as 50,000 casitas already out in Florida waters. Berenger and Butler are leading a team of researchers from the University of Florida's Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences and Old Dominion University. The researchers are collecting lobsters from these pre-existing casitas. So we can see whether casitas affect some of those important population processes, mortality rates, growth rates, nutritional condition, and disease status compared to natural habitats um, in these areas here in the Florida Keys. This study is the first to focus on how casitas could impact young lobsters and nursery habitat. The problem has been, though, in the scientific literature and the studies that people have done on casitas, they have focused up until now primarily on adults and have not really considered the potential impact that casitas might have on juveniles and, again, these nursery habitats. The ecological concerns we have with respect to casitas really have to do with the potential for inappropriate placement of casitas. So if you place the casitas in nursery habitats, we have a situation in which a lot of small lobsters that would normally not dwell with larger lobsters would be drawn by this chemical signal to these other uh, large lobsters under casitas. Adult lobsters can also strip the area around a casita of food and create a halo of bare sand. This dead zone means juvenile lobsters have to move farther away from the shelter to find food and may make them easy prey for larger predators. We're seeing the, the casitas seem to have strong negative effects in a nursery habitat, but not necessarily negative effects in areas where you find mostly adult lobsters. And so, of course, the implications are down the road from a management point of view, if anyone ever wanted to deploy casitas as a new type of gear, you would not want to deploy them in a nursery habitat, um, but it might be okay to deploy them in adult habitats. Researchers are also investigating how casitas impact the spread of a deadly disease affecting lobster populations. This lethal virus was discovered in lobsters more than a decade ago, and although much has been learned about it, many questions still remain. Berenger and his team in the Keys have set up a mini molecular lab on site to test the lobsters they sample for the disease. The goal of our study is to understand how casitas function from the perspective of a lobster. So how they affect the ecology of the lobster, the survival of the lobster, the movement of the lobster, um, and then interrelated with that survival is how casitas function regarding um, the lobster virus that we found here in Florida and actually in, in the rest of the Caribbean, um, PAV1, Panulirus argus virus 1. We want to understand how um, the dynamics of the virus and how it relates to casitas. The disease is of greatest concern for juvenile lobsters because they're more susceptible to it. Infected animals often have a pinkish color on the underside shell and their blood turns milky white. But most importantly, they give off a scent that alerts healthy lobsters to stay away. 
And so if a diseased animal were to move into a casita, healthy lobsters could move out and could move away. But it's a different story when fishermen are using traps. They'll move right into a trap. Those healthy animals then cannot move away from that diseased animal. And we found in as little as seven days there was transmission from, from diseased animals to healthy animals in a trap. And the majority of commercial fishermen in Florida use traps to catch lobsters. Traps can also create other problems for the environment. But fishermen are working to fix these issues. We put through a lobster trap reduction program to lessen the impact on uh, the habitat and also because we're overcapitalized. We have reduced the number of traps by over half a million uh, in the past 15 to 18 years. Trap fishermen are worried that allowing casitas to be used legally could threaten the health of this fishery and their livelihood. I've fished alongside casitas all that time since I'd say the mid 80s. So I saw it all, the whole industry rise whilst I fished. And quite honestly, they outcompete traps. I believe it is unfair for a person to come in now with a new thing as a diver and set up casitas because I have already suffered the conservation blunt and taken the financial hits. We need to find out if in fact we sw switch to a casita system, uh, what impact would it have on traditional and generational fishermen? But other commercial fishermen feel that casitas could be a good alternative to traps. Personally, I think they're the most eco-friendly gear, commercial gear in the world. This is a gear that has zero bycatch, zero environmental damages, zero pollution. It grows corals and sponges at zero navigational hazards. These casitas are also fastened to the bottom so they don't move during a storm, which is uh, a tremendous benefit um, to the environment. Casitas are relatively stationary, and so in, in that sense, casitas are probably a, a better alternative than might traps be. But again, if they're deployed in the wrong areas, they may be worse than traps in terms of their impact on juvenile lobsters. Ultimately, the decision about legalizing casitas will be made by fishery managers, but researchers want to make sure that whatever decision is made, it's based on science. Our hope always is to be able to do good, solid science that allows us to understand what is going on. In this particular case, we really want to understand how this, this, this gear will potentially affect lobster populations. It's an opportunity with that kind of knowledge for us to make informed decisions so that these species will be maintained at levels that are sustainable for generations.